friends this is magic brad on the magic brad show in synergy cafe and i've got a new friend that's just down 35w here from minneapolis living in dallas texas and his name is angel and the last name is rebo you there angel i am here indeed thank you for having me magic brad and thank you everybody who's listening to us today how was the weather down there i understood you guys got some of our minnesota snow down there a while ago. oh come on don't don't remind me <laughs> that wasn't the worst thing right the worst thing was having no power for for a long time oh, yeah, yeah. So weather today is we have some some uh, clouds and it's sunny, and we were 49 at the beginning of the day. So probably right now we are over 50. You got the power back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But the funny thing is that we are having uh, internet outages. Oh sure. Yeah. So Most you know we have to we, we have to get ready for that. Hopefully this will go smoothly. Yeah, yeah, will, absolutely. No, no. I mean, you know, the thing is. Um, how to say this? You, you you would never imagine that you would be 35 degrees inside your house. You know, I mean, it's like crazy stuff. And how how can we possibly do that? You see your breath. I, I, it was dark, so I don't remember. <laughs> well, Angel, I don't do these real long. I keep them kind of condensed. Oh, please, absolutely. I'm, I'm, all, I'm all about it. Please, absolutely. Thank so you. How, how long have you lived in Dallas? For 10 years now. Okay, deep roots. It's a great Good. place. It's Good. a great place. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you're married and got kids? Are you a single wife? I have, yeah, I'm married. I have three kids. Okay. One, two live at home. The other two, the other one left already. So, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, we, we are excited. We love it here. We're very, very into the community. We are volunteers in local hospices, volunteers in the schools. So, you know, we are all in here. I mean, we, we love it here. We, we are in north of Dallas, actually, in a place called Plano. And uh, it's a, it's a. Well, it's that's a, where they make the tackle boxes, the fishing tackle boxes in Plano, Texas. It can be. I don't know. I should be a fisherman. <laughs> oh, the I tackle, remember. tackle boxes. Oh, tackle okay, box. okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I don't. I think it's the second person that has told me that before. It could be. It could be. Uh, but you know, there's so many headquarters. Uh, uh, of, of large corporations right now, you know, so many things happening in the area that probably like the all the, the ones that have lived here, uh, probably they are more like acquainted with former companies, like companies that have been sure. well, in I'm 63, almost 64 years old. So I'm talking way back when I was a teenager going fishing. I remember I had a plastic Plano tech tackle box and wow. Okay. P-L-A-N-O. <laughs> so who would have thunk it? So tell yeah, us a little I bit mean, about. I mean, let, let me tell you something. We've been here for ten years, and there's places that when we came here, there was nothing built. Mm -hmm. And as, as you know, Texas is the second largest state in the union, yeah. so there's so much space to fill. You know that we are we are in. I mean, it, it's amazing the amount of companies and headquarters that are relocating every single year. It's also fascinating how fast they can build buildings these days. Yeah, true. Yeah, very, not like very brick true. by brick by brick anymore. They take them big slabs and put them up, and poof, they got a warehouse. You know. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I don't know what's going to happen with the with the space, uh, with the office space right now, with with you know with all the the virus and everything. But anyway, people will figure it out. People, I mean, we're, we're business people, so you know, everybody figures out what to do with yes. the surroundings. But it's a, it's a great area. It's a I mean, it's an international area. There's people from many different places in the world here. Uh, very important, you know, high-tech industry. So again, multicultural. This is a, this is really a melting pot of cultures here in in Plano, Texas. Do, do you consider yourself an entrepreneur? I do. In, in the business world. Totally. Yeah. You totally. got that entrepreneurial spirit, and we will innovate and adjust. You know, my background is in the event industry, events, mm -hmm. travel, and tourism. Guess what? COVID doesn't like that. That said, no. So yeah. I had to innovate, and that's why I'm doing a lot more online things like this, just staying out there, making it happen. So tell us a little bit about your business and what you do. Your, your yeah, thank you. Absolutely. So basically, both corporate CEOs and established entrepreneurs, they hire me to bridge the gap globally for expansion and exposure. Basically, I help them grow or accelerate the growth of their businesses through strategies related to going global, basically. Mm -hmm. And basically, it's two very very defined parts one is you know exposure it's all about how do you get the right exposure in the right market at the right with, with the right target right mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and, the, and, and the other one is how to get basically, it's, it's, it's more like business development. Um, you know, how to find the right clients or, or partners or partnerships or distributors or resellers. It depends on what service or product you're providing. So you work with a lot of different type of people, I'm sure. And yes. uh, do you run into like the old school guys that uh, want to do like radio and TV because that's what works and they won't innovate but, but, into a different way? Well, I haven't had that conversation, but I definitely deal with old school guys. And I think that everybody is so sensitive already about online, you know, that, I mean, I have been offered myself to, to have a show on, on, on a radio station. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously then it's all about, I would have it if I could bring my clients on and then I would, I could help them, you know, publicize their system, uh, their, their products and services, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it all depends, it, it all goes down to the audience that you are serving. But I think that right now, even the old schoolers are really, they know that they, they have to be online. And to that purpose, actually, I use LinkedIn extensively. Yeah. You know, I use, I use um, uh, I, as you probably have seen, I mean, I, I'm very active on LinkedIn. I have 27,000 connections. I, I literally interact with a few uh, over, no, 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 over. Now that I count it, it's, yeah, it's over 1,500, almost, almost 2,000 people uh, on LinkedIn, interacting every single week, literally. Wow. So yeah, I have a. I, I, it's 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 where my that's my world. It's where I, you know, interact with everybody. Well, the reason I bring it up because I'm in yeah. the event business, and there was a, a party uh, supply store locally here, and the the old school guys they've been around for like thirty yeah. years or something like that. They wanted to do radio ads. They didn't really want to put money into this social media thing because they wanted to do the old radio. And um, you could take that money and you can really put it into a much better place online these days when you get, when you, when you understand that kind of thing. Some don't. But it's a, it's a great way of thinking still because human, so the, the question that I like, I'm not the person that asks, can we do this or can we do that? Like, you know, uh, close-ended questions. Mm -hmm. I'm more the kind of guy that asks <laughs> my clients, my partners, uh, I ask, how can we, how can we? Yeah. And I think that at the end of the day, the main reason why they wanted to be on radio shows or, on, or not, let's say the typical, the classic radio is because of the human touch. And uh, for instance, the other day I was having a conversation with an entrepreneur. He wanted me to help her launch a show online. And actually we ended up thinking of how do we make this show online as, as the old radio shows in which people wanted to, they would never miss the show. They have it. They already knew at what time it was every single week, right. and they wanted to be there. And they wanted to make phone calls to the show, and actually ask them questions live. You know right. these kind of things. You know, and then the radio shows were many different things. But number one, they were they were informative. But more importantly, they would accompany you, right? They they would be your 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 buddies, your buddies. You know what yeah. I mean? You, if, if you felt kind of alone or you didn't know what to do, you, you would go to those programs because you would you like the host or co-hosts, right? And it, it's a place where you wanted to be heard and you were sure. curious about the questions of others. You know, so if, if you realize this, it's like, how do you keep the human connection alive having an, an online interaction? That's the question I'm answering myself Right. for my clients every single day. That's exactly what I do. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the human engagement. And like you said, the Q&A kind of thing where you're actually talking and solving problems. And so it might be more applicable. So it's always good to ask those open-ended questions, the who, what, where, when, how, why, to get information in rather than saying, this is the way it should be. Yes, sir. Exactly. Yeah. Are there any specific niches that you work in? Do you work in like that's a great question. real estate? To be Yeah, that's a great question. To be honest, as I historically i was working with literally every single industry today it's it's more related to the mindset of the owner ceo entrepreneur more than to any industry i i, I really don't think there's any industry i have i have not worked to be to be honest so you I mean, prefer to work with the owner operator rather than going through the red tape of the committee and the board and all that kind of stuff no that's a great question again no i don't mind because i'm i'm good like I'm good physically. Let's say I, I like to have the face to face, you know, yeah. so, so that's where I am really, I mean, if, if I may say, right, humbly speaking, good at, I'm good at being face to face with people, talking to people, listening to people and understanding what they want 
so that I can provide them with what, what they need. You know, so um, to your question, I really like when there's a structure already in place because that makes things easier. But sure. that's for corporations, right? But I, I work a lot with entrepreneurs. So, you know, um, it's not, it's, it's all about the mindset of the person you're working with rather than the kind of company, either size or industry, really. Sure. Yeah, because sometimes people are concerned about their competition. Yeah. And maybe there is no competition. You're just in your own lane. Depends on how yeah. fast you want to drive. But yeah, but and that's one of the reasons why, for instance, last year here in the, in the Dallas uh, business arena, I was helping a, uh, an accelerator with their entrepreneurs and the startup owners. And we did a couple of webinars throughout the year last year about pivoting in times of crisis. And a lot of entrepreneurs, while pivoting is like you're starting over your business, right? Somehow. So they were afraid of, oh, is there competition or oh, there is no competition? I think that that's the wrong, that's the wrong question. Very, very humbly speaking, okay? I think that's the wrong question. The thing is, I mean, do I really like what I'm going to do or to sell? Mm -hmm. it, it, do, I, do I have the expertise? Uh, is there an audience for this? And are they going to pay for it? If you are able to answer those four questions, then the competition really becomes irrelevant. Because right. if you're able to do yourself, you're able to do something better than the competition, if there's competition, then you're going to thrive. So the question is rather, not if there's competition, is how can I differentiate myself? And again, I also believe that the same way I told you before that I don't pick like industries or I don't pick uh, you know, size, company sizes mm -hmm. or you know, profiles, I pick mindset. I think it's the exact same way. I think that even if you provide the same service as someone else, I think that you are going to be, you, there's still going to be an audience because people will like you as opposed to someone else. Do you know what I, I mean? Agree. I agree. So, so let's say you and I, we both provide the same service. By nature, by nature, there's going to be people that naturally will be attracted to you and others will be attracted to me sure. just because of who you are even because of your physical appearance, the way you speak, your accent. I mean, there's so many variables. I mean, your experience in life, right? But there's so many things. I agree. So that's, why, that's why I think that it's, it all depends on how badly you want to do this, you know? How really enthusiastic and, and, and passionate you are about providing a specific service or selling a specific product rather than the competition. I, I'm very skeptical about cutting someone's wings because of the competition very skeptical yeah, i've never really understood the competition in business because if you look at it mcdonald's and burger king and coca-cola and pepsi are still there so nobody's won there is no mm -hmm. goal there's no end goal like there is in a sports game where there's a goal and a time time that runs out and there are more and more and there are more and more it's funny that you mentioned this because if you go to the central markets or to the whole foods markets and, and these places you will see that there's probably like four or five more brands of co of cola yeah of, of cola you know refreshment yes. there are already and if you go actually i remember when i was still living in latin america 11 12 years ago there was actually a very very popular soda brand that was from peru that was competing head to head with both pepsi and coca-cola and that was again 12 years ago and they started I'm, 20 plus years i'm in ago. agreement with that i think it's uh i mean if your mother and father competed you wouldn't be here exactly <laughs> you gotta work which, together <laughs> which ends up which which eventually takes you to a place where okay so how can i collaborate as opposed to compete i agree Maybe to you know so that's we're, why there are very so many similar ways there to... i'm building out a thing called the synergy collaborative because that's what it is it's working together figure out how can we make, we don't want to take and share the pie, we let's make a bigger pie. So um, <laughs> let me tell you something. So every time I speak about the main mistakes that entrepreneurs make when they start their own journey, collaboration is one of the main mistakes. Number one, because it's a blind spot for them. Number two, because they are afraid of it. And number three, because they're not able to do it. They don't know how to do it. It's, it sounds crazy, but if you analyze it and you, you said it great, um, uh, Magic Brad, we are not taught, we are not taught on how to collaborate. How many, how many subjects did you have? How many periods did you have in your elementary or middle or high schools 
about collaborating. What's the right way for collaborating? Well, of our collaboration? brains are functioning with the left and the right. It's, so we already got that good and evil and the black and white and the separation. You know, you got to realize that there is a gray. <laughs> yeah, and, and, but also again, how do you collaborate? How much do you give and how much do you expect in return? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it's funny, but we really, I really believe that we are very bad in collaboration. Very I, bad. I agree. It's a, it's, it's an under, you kind of wonder, okay, I put in, you know, a hundred hours, you only put in 70 hours and how come we're splitting 50, 50? Yes. Eh. <laughs> well, I, I understand our mind thinks logically like that. Um, yes. I have another question about who you, who do you serve? Are you in a specific geographic area? Do you prefer the United States, North America, or is it global? Does it matter to you? Yeah. yeah. So I, I've, I've had in my, the last you know, five years of my business, I've had clients in, in Europe, in Latin America, in Asia, in Australia, in Canada. So I have customers all over the place. So w when it comes down to you know, helping companies uh, go global, um, you know, there's really, I take clients from almost everywhere in the world. Uh, right now, actually, I'm working on two two projects, uh, and one of them is in Asia, like uh, you know, like expanding expansion, large expansion projects, and you know, there's really no geographical origin. Obviously, I have a very important you know footprint here in the Dallas area because I'm here. So there's a lot of executives that know me and know who I am, right? Because they see me around. But uh, my clients really come from anywhere in the world because oh, of the I online world. You. Because some of the things that I'm working on, it's hard for me to work with someone over in Singapore or Bali, Indonesia, because the calendar is so flip flopped. You know, yeah, we're going to meet yeah. on Monday, but guess what? It's Tuesday there. Yeah. <laughs> so I try and stay in the central time zone as much as I can, but yeah, to each but his own, you know? Yeah, yeah. I just, I just had a conference call, a you know, video conference call at 9 30 a.m. here in Central, and it was really late at night for them, but you know, we, we try to compensate, you know, we try to do like late for me, late for them, late for me, late for them. So we try I like to- the way you operate because it's kind of doesn't matter because over on the other side of the planet, you got early morning people and they got late night people and it depends on the vibe and stuff. So it yes. sounds like you're very open to whoever wants to work with you. I, I am, done. Yeah, that's true, that's true. So yeah, I mean, typically, I mean, I, I have to say I work a lot of hours um, a good day for me is a day in which I have a two or three hour break in the middle. Okay. You know, so, so I see my day in two big chunks, really because of that. So, you know, so I have a, a big chunk in the morning starting really early. And then I have a big chunk, let's say after five, I have another big chunk of, you know, um, Asia is, 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 is waking up and Europe is going to sleep, you know, so... What would be Absolutely. some of the, the, the key words that you would use um, for when people are looking for you, if they're searching you out? Is yeah, international, in, international, international expansion, international exposure. Uh, I, I am an influencer, so actually I, I'm very strong. I'm a very strong business to business influencer or business to consumer because the profile of my, of, of in the 27,000 connections I have on LinkedIn, I told you before, I engage with more than 1,500 every single week. So because of the nature of, of what I do in LinkedIn, I'm, I'm an influencer there. So I am an, a LinkedIn strategist, a LinkedIn influencer, okay. um, uh, let's say a global expansion. Those would be the, the keywords. Yeah, LinkedIn mm -hmm. is a whole nother world. I got a friend locally here that wrote a book on it. He calls himself the LinkedIn rock star, Mike O'Neill. I don't know if you know that. I've name. heard his name. I've heard his name. Yes. He's uh, definitely a definitely Mike O'Neill. Okay. Lives here in Minneapolis. Used to be out in Denver, but um, he's okay. really heavy into LinkedIn Navigator and helping gen lead generation for his clients. That's what yeah, yeah, thing. that's lead good. Generation through LinkedIn. I do a lot of that. I do a lot of that, Magic Breath. A lot. <laughs> it's a big world out there, Angel. It's a big world. Yeah, it's a big world, but it's becoming smaller and smaller. Well, I think it's important to. I mean. Sometimes niche down myself, I'm working on what I call narrow casting rather than broadcasting. Yeah. I'm trying to stay within the central time zone so that we're all working on the same time frame and in the event industry. So I'm specific to the event industry, ideally right here in the Twin Cities. So suppliers yeah. of events and people that plan events. So Good. I'm pretty niche down, but inevitably you get into this, oh, that looks interesting. I should sell that software to real estate agents and you get lost sometimes. Yeah. Put the blinders on and stay focused. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I have yeah, a hard totally time agree. with that. 
Yeah. So tell us, how do we get a hold of you if someone says, that sounds interesting. I want to expand my business globally. How do we get a hold of Thank that? Thank you. Guy? Thank you. Absolutely. So it's very easy. As I said before, I'm actually very active online. So it's going to be, if you Google my name, you will see all my social media outlets and posts every single day, every single right day. Right here, Angel Rebo. Thank you. Yeah, that's my LinkedIn profile. Right Thank you. There, but it looks like <laughs> that, that's where you go. Exactly. Thank right. you. So well, you I can will. go to LinkedIn, and, and uh, but the easiest way to reach out to me directly is through my email address. Every single day, I answer every single message. I have a team behind me. Otherwise, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be it wouldn't be possible. My email address is very simple. It's Angel, like my name, Angel from Heaven, right? A N G E L, and then at angelrebo.com all together. Angel Rebo. My last name is spelled like R I B as in boy O dot com. Again, Angel at angelrebo. Dot com. That is easy. Four letters, Rebo. Yeah, very easy. Very yeah. easy. <laughs> well, Angel, I'm going to sign this off and then beam it up Thank to you. universe and propagate it out to that Thank global you. international world. And we'll see if we can hook some fish. <laughs> <laughs> Magic Brad, it's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the opportunity to be, you know, in front of your audience and to be able to have this uh, conversation. I really liked it and enjoyed it. As you that said, is. it's it's very natural. I think that it's it's People are really want to want to see like or listen to authentic conversations with no you know no hidden agendas nor anything just being yeah. yourself and myself and being ourselves here trying to inspire and everybody listening to us obviously thank you very much for being with us today. I agree. I think a lot of the business gets closed on the golf course or you know at the at the watering hole as opposed to in the seminar room. Uh, I agree. <laughs> okay, Angel. Thank you very much. Be well. Thank please. you. You have a good day.